telekinetic teenagers, horrifying hotels, petrifying pooches. Stephen King is undoubtedly one of the world's greatest horror writers. Born in 1947, King has been writing for most of his life, releasing his first novel, Carrie, at age 27 in 1974. Focusing on supernatural horror and crime books, King has since written 63 novels and countless short stories over the span of almost 50 years. Some of his most famous works include The Shining, Pet Cemetery, and Misery. One of his more celebrated novels, It, is often referred to as King's scariest work. Considering its focus is on a children-killing extraterrestrial spider clown, it is not surprising where the title has come from. Not only is it a terrifying piece of literature, it is also phenomenally written. It takes a certain skill to make horror writing interesting and engaging to read for hours and hours at a time, and King has proven over again that he is the man for a job. It, one of King's larger novels, is enriched in character narration and description that allows us to gain an incredibly deep understanding of each character that is not present in a lot of other novels. The novel focuses mainly on seven protagonists when they are children and again when they are older. The flow goes between the ages throughout the book, focusing on each of the characters at a time. It would seem a difficult task to cover every character with enough detail to make an engaging and interesting read, and yet King has written his characters with more than enough detail for his readers to truly understand each and every one of his seven protagonists. One of the ways he achieves this is by the use of the double layer of narration when writing his character's thoughts and feelings. This is accomplished by foregrounding a line or paragraph of thought with a parenthesized sentence or word that creates a deeper meaning to the original thought. It creates the effect of a deeper level of consciousness that we know exists in real life thought, but is certainly not often shown in literature. It is usually used in tense or emotional situations where multiple thought processes would be present. Although deeper narration can incorporate many forms of stylistics, the main ones that Stephen King uses in his works are metaphor, backstory, silence, and foreshadowing. In this example, we see that the parenthesized word him is separating good care of it. This obviously shows that the narrator of the passage sees the object in the question as something alive deep down rather than the inanimate object that it is, a childhood bike that has recently been returned to him. This use of deeper, deeper narration shows us exactly what the character is thinking in the deeper level of thought processes. The use of the technique in this example also incorporates metaphor and backstory. By calling the bike a him, it personifies the object and shows that the narrator, who is now a man, still has a boyish connection to this object. From this, we get a hint of backstory about this character and his precious childhood bike without an unnecessary info dump. Without explicitly stating these things, King has shown through deeper narration technique the inner thoughts of his characters, which solidifies the bond between character and reader. Another example is when a character is remembering a time in his childhood and runs over the names of his childhood bullies. He thinks of the names in a pattern that resembles that of the famous Wizard of Oz line, Lions and Tigers and Bears, oh my. After he thinks the three names, a parenthesized oh my shows that his deeper consciousness recognises the Wizard of Oz theme, but does not really want to think it. This is also showing a hint of backstory of the character's past. It might seem like a mundane fact to have about a character, but the way King subtly shows the kinds of movies that this character has watched as a child is very effective, as it gives the readers more of a hint as to who this character is. Although we do not know for certain, it is likely that the character has not seen the movie since he was a child and the memory of the famous line has sprung up on him. This creates an almost comedic tone to the character's situation, as he is thinking about a terrible time of his childhood bullies and it is interrupted by a sudden memory of a light-hearted children's movie. As King, has written, as King has written this in a way that makes the thought seem intrusive and unwanted, we can infer that these three bullies are not at all like the Wizard of Oz characters and the narrator does not want to draw any comparisons. 
This creates a contrast between the two subject matters that further improves the quality of King's writing. The deeper narration technique also shows intrusive and invasive thoughts. The final example I will talk about shows the narrator being reluctantly taken back to his childhood. King writes a passage where the narrator is thinking about a time, a certain moment of his childhood, and as he is doing so, an intrusive thought interrupts the line. This particular line is a parenthesized line of a childhood rhyme that would help him with the stutter he used to have when he was younger. Although the parenthesized line is much longer than the rest of the passage, it does not hinder the flow of the narration. This is because it is a common line throughout the book, so the reader is familiarised with it to the point that they could skim over it and still be able to understand the entire rhyme. The use of the deeper narration in this technique not only shows us what he is thinking about, it is also foreshadowing the return of his childhood stutter further on in the story. It creates a build-up effect as the intrusive line keeps forcing its way back into the protagonist's main thought until his stutter comes back in full. The reader knows that it is coming, and yet when it does, they still feel the immense disappointment that the protagonist feels. The following passage is one that I wrote using King's deeper narration technique. She opened the envelope with caution, exhausted fingers failing at the lip. The letter inside was handwritten. She could tell by the ink smudges along the folds of the page. She pulled out the life sentence, letter, and anxiously read the first line. As you can see, I have used King's technique by separating the act of pulling out the letter with the parenthesized thought life sentence. We can already tell that this character is feeling anxious about this particular letter, but the deeper narration shows us exactly why she is feeling anxious. Although we do not know the contents of the letter, we can see that it is majorly important in that she views it as a life sentence. Now, we know it lit cannot literally be a court-ordered life sentence, but we can see that she views it as something equally as damning. This use of metaphor and foregrounding entices the reader to fur further read on to find out what this particularly condemning letter is about. Now, how to incorporate this technique into your own works. First, start by writing a scene that is particularly emotional for that character, or at least where that character is deep in thought. Then, write a passage of narration that reflects the character's direct thought process. Then write about what that character is thinking deep, deep down. It is best to keep the deep narration short and concise that is easy for the reader to follow along without stopping the flow. Find a place in the passage where you can separate a line of thought with the deeper conscious thought where it makes sense that that thought would be there. Parenthesize it so it is fully separated. This technique is also not one to overdo. It is, highly, it is a highly effective technique, but if it is used too often, it will break the pace and the flow and become disjointed and jumpy to read, leaving the reader uncomfortable and unwilling to continue. As a fan of Stephen King, it was a pleasure to analyse one of the many techniques he uses in his writing, and I can't wait to use more of it in my own works. Thank you.